So let, let's dig into a, a pretty big topic that, you know, one, one of the heralded members of the Konami team that worked on uh, the Castlevania series. So yeah, Koji Garashi left, uh, left Konami um, and basically at the same time went and did a GDC talk at the Game Developers Conference talk about, you know, uh, types of games he likes to make. And um, it's... I don't see it as sad. I see it as a very good thing for the Japanese game industry. Uh, we kind of talked about it, you know, prior, where people said, you know, uh, you know, what what could the Japanese game industry do to bounce back? And mm. the problem is, is a lot like the U.S. game industry, all we're seeing are rehashes. And uh, some people misinterpret what I was saying as being, you know, simple, you know, new ideas. It's not really new ideas. I'm not suggesting that people pull new ideas out of the thin air. You know, they need to go back to p- developers need to go back to doing what they're comfortable doing. Koji Garashi got stuck for... T- now, Koji Garashi is the guy who... He didn't create Castlevania, but he very much popularized it in the 90s. Uh, the, the Metroidvania style. The open, like, the exploratory one, story. The, one, the uh, style. ones like the ones in the DS. The, the, the ones on the Game Boy Advance, uh, Symphony of the Night. Um, yeah, the DS ones, exactly. And, uh, you know, he gets stuck for two years making mobile games. And he can't do it. And why can't he do it? Because it's just not what he knows. It's not what he wants to do. So he keeps trying and they keep canceling. So finally he says, you know what, I'm done. I'm gonna go I'm gonna branch out of my own and do and do what I want. You, you think a company like like Konami would recognize the talent they have in their employees and that worked on one of their biggest franchises, but might have. I mean, Konami I mean, is no better than Capcom or any of the other big guy uh, Square Enix out there who are, the the disconnect between what they want and what they think the fans want is just it's it's massive. So this is another one of those big names like Kaiji Nafune, uh, the guy who created you know Mega Man. Um, another one of those guys who's gonna go out, he's gonna start his own uh, you know his his own startup, and he's gonna make what he wants, and it's sure. gonna make the fans happy. And it's probably if 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 the Mighty Number no. Nine Kickstarter was any indication, yeah. it's gonna make uh, Koji Garashi money <laughs> hand over over fucking fist. I mean, he's he's not gonna have any problems. And you know, people were already. Uh, um, People were already coming up with like names hilarious, for yeah, hilarious names, you know, for you know, um, Castlemania was yeah, one yeah, that I, I really was liked. Say, you know, it's gonna be like Castlemania, a guy with the whip. That's not. It's gonna be like Simon Belton or something instead of Simon Belmont. But what I think is sort of telling is to hear um, him talk about his leave. You know, there wasn't a lot of animosity from other people on the same level as him. People who worked with him, everyone understands. Everyone gets it. I think mm-hmm. the the corporate structure of, of Japanese game development is in very real danger. And, uh, you know, the whole time they're making these Shadows of the Damned games, you know, everyone keeps saying, we want a traditional Castlevania, and Konami won't let them make it. So what happens? Well, their games come out, they get bad reviews, they don't sell very well, and the person who could save them, they've already scared off, they've left. So these companies really have to start thinking about how they're doing business here because they're going to lose all the creative talent they have. And, and plus the veterans that were there that know what makes a successful game or franchise and maybe they can help you know you have a lot of people getting into getting into the industry and maybe it'd be helpful to have a guy that's been there for three console generations you know what i mean so right to sort of mentor and now those guys are gone yeah, one, you, one major player from capcom one major player from konami the biggest franchises of each arguably well i don't know, you know the exact staff but you know that was always the joke of final fantasy is people are like well, why is final fantasy you know not doing great these days. Why is it garbage? You know, why is it different? And it's because, well, Final Fantasy is just a name. Anyone that this, the current, te- you know, people I think tend to think of these things as, you know, books written by authors. You know, the team never changes. The no, team is constantly changing. Yeah. And anyone who is involved with the Final Fantasies that most people love and remember aren't there. It, so it's it's not just that their hands aren't in it, but unfortunately, like you had mentioned, um, there's no guiding forces. There's no one to learn the ropes from. You know, so basically, like, here's Final Fantasy, here's a bunch of assets you have to shove in there, Moogles, Chocobos, you know, that sort of thing. Make a game, and they don't know what to do with it. So how do, the, how do these big companies, do they get startled by this? How, do they, how should they respond? Should they, you know what I mean, like, how can they, I guess, foster a culture where they want to keep these guys there and productive and, and creatively fresh so they're not working on mobile games that... They should guys that have been working in the industry for twenty years should not be working on a mobile game. Well, you know? a lot of the a lot of Japanese game development is mobile focused, but it's all mostly crap. I mean, you can look at the new Dragon, uh, the new um, uh, Breath of Fire that's coming out. That's mobile with in-app purchases. 
Uh, you can look at the new Mana game that's coming out that's going to be mobile with in-app purchases. Mm -hmm. um, it makes a lot of money over there, but it's not what a lot of people actually want to play. I don't know what can be done. I'm not going to pretend to be an expert on a, you know Japanese business culture, but we all know that it's slow to change and it's sure. very uptight. So it's going to take, I think, a few more of these guys leaving, and it's probably going to take a big giant toppling like Konami or Capcom to, or Square to either, to may, Maybe not go under, but to actually be humble to the fact that they're really in bad shape right exactly and i you know i don't know when that would happen i, I sadly i feel like we're still a pretty long ways off from that you think so but i you know it's gonna take something like that i think to, for to, for a, a big change to happen well konami's still on my shit list because they bought out the hudson soft properties like three years ago four years ago and still haven't done anything with them well they, no they, they canceled everything that was happening with them and they didn't do anything after that Anyway, that's a whole other issue. But yeah. <laughs> it's a whole other ball of wax. <laughs> so, anyways, it, you know, it, it's... I, I don't look at it as a shame. I look at it as a good thing. I, I hope only good stuff comes yeah. from it. He even specifically said... Uh, this is, well, this is, unlike a lot of startup or guys who leave in search, excuse me, he doesn't want to go directly for PC. He wants to make these games for consoles. He wants to give console gamers the games that they want. So, you know, we get enough of these guys making enough money and we start seeing these things on modern systems i'm expecting we'll see them on portables more than anything uh that's cause for celebration well here's his, his statement i've decided to break out of my own to have the freedom to make the kind of games i really want to make the same kind i think fans of my past games want as well leaving konami was a big decision and not one i took lightly i spent my entire career there made many friends and had a lot of great opportunities but i hope all the gamers and fans who have supported me in the past will join me in being excited about one what comes next Wish me luck. Yeah, yeah. He, he's got a game. Yeah. The first thing he's yeah. going to do is make Castlemania. I mean, Castlemania. Or, or, or whatever it's called. I, know. But, I mean, it's that's funny. exactly what he's doing. And that, and that's great. I can't wait. That's going to be... Um, yeah, and obviously I think the copyright rules are a little bit looser in Japan that you can get away with it a little bit easier. That's sure. why my never I'm sure it'll be struck yeah, down yet. It'll have a different name and a different main character, but, but it'll, it'll be, be gothic toned. You know, yeah. just like Mighty Number no. Nine is robot based with robot masters. Yeah. It's gonna be Castlevania, and you know, by an, it's it's gonna be the same. So that's good. Well, um, we wish him luck, Koji Igarashi. You know, we'll look forward to your Kickstarter next month. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 